Hello and welcome to this week's episode of UMass Sports Weekly, the last show of the fall semester. I'm your host, Chris Corso. It's been a great semester so far this year, and we've had an outstanding coverage of UMass athletics. We're going to do things a little differently on the show tonight. Our reporters have worked so hard this semester that we're going to reward them by having a little around-the-horn format throughout the world, uh, the world of sports. We'll award one point to each reporter who wins the argument for each question and pick a winner for each segment. Before we get things started, let's recap what happened since our last show in UMass Athletics. The UMass basketball team took a 3-0 perfect record into a pair of games at Mohegan Sun on the 22nd and the 23rd. In the first game, the Minutemen fell to Notre Dame despite an 18-point effort from Derek Gordon. In the ensuing game against Florida State, UMass rebounded with a 75-69 win, led by 15 points from Dante Clark and Jabari Hines apiece. The Minutemen took on Northeastern on November 28th and beat the Huskies easily 79-54. The team has just tipped off in Baton Rouge against the LSU Tigers, and we'll give you updates on that game throughout the night. The UMass hockey team's struggles continued over Thanksgiving break. The team lost two consecutive games at the Mullen Center on November 21st and the 22nd. BC beat UMass 5-3, followed by an 11-1 defeat against Vermont. The Minutemen put on a better fight against the Catamounts on their home ice, but still fell 3-1 on the 25th. On Friday, UMass broke their three-game losing streak with an impressive comeback, and it was a victory 3-2 over the Quinnipiac team on the road. Goalkeeper Henry Dill stopped 37 shots in that game. The next day, the Minutemen hosted the Bobcats only to fall 3-1 in that game. The Minutemen finished off the break with a 4-9 record overall. The men and women basketball team has shown some promising potential so far this season. Over the break, the team competed in the Hospitality Hill Challenge in North Texas. UMass defeated North Texas in that first game, 56-46, led by Kimber Hill's 10 points and 10 boards, and that's her first career double-double. UMass dropped the following game on the 23rd to Florida State, 73-47, despite a 15-point performance from Rashida Timbilla. The men and women capped off the break with an impressive 67-65 victory at the Mullen Center to beat Central Florida. The men and women scored a final of 13 points in that game. That'll do it for our highlights here. Let's get those debates started. This is UMass Sports Weekly. This is UMass Sports Weekly. Welcome back to UMass Sports Weekly. Like we said, we're doing things a little differently tonight. It's the last show of the semester, so we're going to get some debate started here. And for that, we got Tim Dennehy here and Tommy Kaluti. He's ready to fight. Um, it's a basketball versus hockey segment. We got hockey fans, we got basketball fans. What's the better sport? So we're going to start it off with Tommy because I know you're raring to go here. Which sport is more entertaining for you to watch? Well, Chris, I'm going to start off by saying. This isn't even a question anymore. Hockey is a much more entertaining sport. Recently, Sports Science did a uh, little segment uh, talking about the difference between hockey and football. Now, football known for the big hits, right? Hockey players, despite being 17% smaller, hit 20% harder. Everybody loves violence. That's why everybody should love hockey. It's more entertaining. Also, lower scoring. That means the more goals, the better for the audience. You score a goal, everybody goes wild. Basket goes in in basketball, ooh, yay, you got another 80 coming, that's great. Hockey is a much better sport, much, much more fun to watch, and much more entertaining for the crowd. All the players are crowd pleasers, you don't have one star to focus on. And, I, I hate to bring it up, but you can drop the gloves. I mean, there's always that issue of fighting, it riles everybody up, and uh, it's great for the sport. That's why hockey's more entertaining. Now, Tommy, you got me on the fighting there. We know all these basketball players are flopping all over the place, which is not fun to watch. Tim, give us that argument against that. I'm awarding a point here, so you, you, you got to go strong here. He, he, he had a nice argument there. Now, see, basketball, let me just say, is 
A lot more entertaining than hockey, and I'm gonna give you a lot of reasons why. First of all, I'm gonna completely disregard that uh, point you made about how lower scoring. I mean, we, we are a nation of consumerism. We like more, you know? We score one nothing, two nothing, are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, are you serious right now? That's nothing, you know? 100 points plus, that's what I like to see. As far as fighting goes, I mean, that is just disgraceful. I mean, we have classy players like Ron Artest that are trying to just like He's really show, like this. that are really trying to show <laughs> what they have in their performance. I mean, fight, drop the gloves. If I want, I could watch Floyd Mayweather anytime. I can go HBO, af boxing after dark. I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. Are you serious? That's no, absolutely not. For that question, I am going to have to award that point this way. <laughs> I haven't seen that enthusiasm all year out of Tim. We've seen those video breakdowns over here, but that. We got one nothing too. I'm sorry, I'm consistently <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, for the second question, which has a bigger following and what makes each sport unique? So we're going to start off with Tim on this one. We'll keep things fair. Go ahead. You got the point on the last one. So basketball does have the bigger following, and that is both worldwide and in uh, and in the United States. And I'll start strictly in the United States. I mean, from Forbes magazine, this is from April 23rd of this year. It said the only NHL game to be registered among the top viewed cable program was Saturday's double overtime throw between Columbus Blue Jackets and Pittsburgh Penguins. Penguins. Uh, <laughs> the game rating a .3 rating with 850,000 people viewers. People viewers, that is not what it said, but people viewers. Rank it right behind this afternoon's SpongeBob episode and a late night Full House rerun. So that was a great episode. Yeah, <laughs> people would rather watch John Samuels and Bob Saget. I would watch John Samos any day. I would watch John Samos too. He's a great looking lad. But <laughs> I'm, what I'm saying is you they could have sex with one man. Who would it be? John, John Samos. Samos. Yes. <laughs> but I rest my case there. I'm not even going to say All anything. right, he's done there. I'll cut him off well, there. Go ahead. Fight. Well, fight. Tim likes to think that, you know, there's no world outside the U.S., <laughs> which, you know, sometimes is interesting, but it's hockey is bigger on a global scale. Now, let's look at the highest ranking sports game of all time. That would be the Olympic final between the U.S. and Canada in the last Winter Olympics, where it drew 27.6 million viewers. It peaked at 34.8 million. The basketball Olympic championship, worldwide viewing, 12.5 mm -hmm. million. I'm not great at math, but I am good. <laughs> and that is more. Also, I want to talk about the countries that are more involved with this. Hockey. Let's think of the country. Basketball, I'll point to the Olympics again. You have the U.S., a little bit of Spain, and you have Manu Ginobili that makes up the entire country of Argentina. Now let's think of hockey. U.S., Canada, Russia, Switzerland, Finland, Sweden, Latvia, all of these countries. Slovakia, my favorite player, David Krejci. The Czech Republic, that's nine countries. These countries have more money, provide more sponsorships, and make the NHL and other versions of hockey global. Better sport, more worldwide. I got to give that one to Tim. Obviously, I'm the global guy when it comes to the NHL. My, our goalie is Lundqvist, so we got to give him that point. We got one-to-one -one on there. So now the third question, which is bigger on a global scale? We kind of touched on that before, but tell me, Tim. You, uh, well, Tim, let's we'll throw it to you. We'll throw it back to you since Tommy won that last one. Take this question. On a worldwide scale? On a worldwide scale. On a worldwide scale. Okay, well, let me just say that uh, on a worldwide scale, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take professional out. I'm not gonna, we're not going to talk about professionals because I, I'm a basketball fan. I like to play basketball, and it costs... Uh, last time, I just did a quick Google search. It costs $11.99 for a basketball, and that's all you need. How much does it cost? You need ice time. You need sticks. You need pads. You need all this. It could cost up to I don't know how long. And I, I didn't play hockey as a kid because my parents didn't want to wake up at 4 in the morning to go you know, to ice hockey and whatnot. And, you know, basketball, you can wake up at any time, you can go to the court, and that's all over the world. I mean, you have people in China, we have people in Taiwan, I can list as many countries I used named in your last uh, little debate there. Do it. But, yeah, okay, we got Russia, China, <laughs> Taiwan, Russia has Indonesia. Hockey. Russia has hockey? You know, since we kind of talked about that, that global scale, just give us your, your love for the game. Give, us, give me your argument. We'll, we'll go with that for the third question. What's your argument for, for, for basketball as a sport? It's overall better. It is overall better. I mean, there's just... Like I said, John Stamos. That's, that's all I really need to say. Like, what, what do you have to say? I'll rebut whatever you have to say. So my, my big thing, basketball, it's, it's a known fact. Basketball is much more popular in the U.S. from a TV-wide view. But I want to talk about franchises and fan loyalty. Fifteen NHL franchises sold out every game last year. I, I, besides maybe the Lakers and perhaps the Bulls in the Heat. I, I really don't see any other NBA team doing it. And I want to point out 
ticket prices. Fans of the NHL are much more loyal than fans of the NBA. In the second round of the 2013 NHL playoffs, the average ticket price was $403. Fans were willing to play this, pay this, and these games still sold out. NBA was only 294. The NHL has a 37% higher fan loyalty rating. Also, I want to point out the discrepancy between the showings of these, uh, these two sporting events. Basketball has the luxury of being shown on ESPN, TNT, and what is the other one? Um, ABC. Because more advertisers are willing to put on that channel. That's not true. There is a contractual issue with the NHL where they are not on ESPN anymore. I didn't really? sign it. I didn't sign it. Why didn't you sign it? I was too young. <laughs> but worldwide, hockey has a following of 1.8 billion people. Like I said, it's more popular in the Olympics. And what I want to really bring out is the fact that when you look at the difference between the two sports, in basketball, my biggest issue, you want at a personal level, I played ho both hockey and basketball as a kid. And one of, one of my favorite moments in hockey history is when I saw Patrice Bergeron step on that ice in the 2013 playoffs with two broken ribs, uh, a sprained MCO, and a collapsed lung. Michael Jordan, game and six flu. That, I mean, a now, you're collapsed trying to lung. Me over here. You may, yeah. have to, you may have to shift to, towards the Rangers, and I don't know if, you, if you're trying well, to go Well, if you want to point to the Rangers, <laughs> all you have to look at is Dominic Moore, a guy who played after his wife passed away in the Stanley Cup Finals. Cool. I mean, it's just the, the, and if you really want to go into it, the incarceration rates of players. I mean, that's, that's another thing that you can point to. But the, the, the NHL, the players are better. They're a more fan-friendly league, and it's just an overall much better sport. Give me your last words, Tim. I'm giving you one chance to counter here. What do you got? Basketball was invented in the greatest nation, in the greatest state in that nation. Have you ever been to the Basketball Hall of Fame? I have. It's fantastic. It's right next to Six Flags. You like Six Flags? <laughs> yeah. You are not a fan of... It's that too expensive! American. Too expensive? What, what that part fast you pass, going to? That fast pass is like $30! That's it. I'm done. I'm done. This I've had it. I've had it. <laughs> All right, so I'm that'll, doing this. That, that'll do it for our debate for basketball versus hockey, and I'm going to have to <laughs> I'm gonna have to give it to the hockey debate. I think he had the stronger argument, and that'll do it for that segment. We'll be right back to talk about our mascot, the Minutemen, and we'll have two, two of our reporters debating that. We'll be right back. <laughs> 